Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Maria and today we're discussing the Montessori approach to language development in infants and toddlers. Education must begin at birth. Language development is no different. Language development begins with the spoken language. Children must first learn to speak before they can read and write. The sensitive period for language development is from birth to age six. But Dr. Montessori had also said that while language is formed from birth to one year without the conscious will of the child being engaged, from one to two years of age, language is developed intentionally by the child who is trying to express himself. Therefore, provide a rich language environment from the very beginning because even in that first year of life, they're absorbing it all like a sponge. This is also the hardest time to do so because the child is not yet providing much feedback and it feels as if we are speaking with ourselves. But as Dr. Montessori said, if you consider this absorbent mind in relation to language, you will understand how necessary it is to put a small child among people who will speak well and correctly and who talk a great deal. And so it is endlessly important to speak to our child speak in full, complete, rich, and descriptive sentences using proper terms and proper grammar. Model how the natural ebb and flow of a conversation works. Research has confirmed time and time again that children learn language best from human-to-human -human interaction, from hearing how we speak, seeing our lips move, feeling our breath as we speak, and having immediate feedback to their own attempts to communicate. A child can only acquire the words he hears spoken around him. This is not teaching, but absorption. The child is, by nature, hungry for words. He loves strange, long words like the names of dinosaurs and constellations. He takes in all these words without understanding their meaning as his mind is still taking language in by a process of unconscious absorption. So what else can we do to guide our child's language development in the first three years of life as we're laying the foundation for future language development? Read to your child. Read a wide variety of books of various topics and differing lengths. You never know which words will be of interest to them. Choose books with beautiful images to keep them engaged. In the earlier months, focus on high contrast, simple images. Books with just one image per page or with a new scene on each page are much more likely to hold your little one's attention in the early days. Make reading a part of your routine from the very start. As your infant becomes a toddler, you may be surprised with the types of books that they're drawn to. Some of our favorites are encyclopedias with real photographs, books without words that allow for a new story each time, and nursery rhyme books. Sing to your child. Singing provides the opportunity to introduce melody, rhythm, and rhyme. Even if, like me, you can't really sing, your child will still benefit from and enjoy hearing your voice singing. You can, of course, incorporate music in other ways into your daily routine as well, but do not forego the opportunity to sing to your child and speak with your child, not just at them, but with them. Yes, even in those early days and weeks, when your baby is awake and alert, speak to them as if you're having a conversation. Speak slowly and leave pause for them to process and see that natural flow of conversation. Earlier than you think, your baby may start to react or babble during those pauses, as if they're trying to contribute to the conversation. Even when your child does begin to speak, remember that children's brains take longer to process and we need to leave a long enough pause for them to not only process what we have just said to them, but to also gather the proper response and say it back to us. Try counting to 10 in your head to see how much more your child is actually able to respond back to you with that extra time. Remember that while we do want to use parentese, which is speaking in a more high-pitched and sing-songy voice, we do not want to use baby talk, which uses made-up kitsy words like shoozy woozies or copy our baby's misspoken words. So if your child is thirsty and asks for wawa, simply respond with, you'd like some water? Sure, let's get you some water to drink. Allowing that opportunity to immediately hear the proper language without emphasizing or repeating the incorrect language. If you're at a loss of what to talk about with an infant, simply start speaking your thoughts, your plans, and narrating what you're doing, especially if you're in the midst of a care task like changing a diaper or giving them a bath. Sports casting or narrating what your child is doing can also be beneficial, but ensure that your child isn't actually focused intently on their activity of choice, because even an infant can enter a moment of concentration by watching the leaves move or looking at their own reflection. We want to allow that opportunity to practice concentration without us jumping in. These are the building blocks for future focus and independent play. You can take your child on a house tour or a tour outside and simply start describing what is around you in as much detail as possible. Remember that literally everything is new and exciting for your child. It's also never too early to introduce practical life activities. Of course, in that first year, especially in early infancy, our babies are simply observing what we do, but they are paying attention, taking it all in, and getting ready to join in when they're physically able to do so in the future. Go ahead and explain to them exactly what is happening as you load laundry, put away dishes, or get a snack ready. Letting our child get involved in our day-to-day -day tasks is not only the simplest way to start Montessori at home, 
It's also a simple way to introduce varied and rich language. Remember to focus on not only the quantity, but also the quality of language that you're providing your child. The movements needed to complete the practical life tasks are also incredibly important in preparing the child for future writing skills. As your child begins to show interest in materials, toys, and activities, we can provide even more language development opportunities through some curated play ideas. A quick note that we set up activities to be presented in the way that our language is read and written. For English, that is left to right. So we will lay out cards left to right, look for matches left to right, set up transferring activities left to right, and so on as a pre-literacy skill. Language baskets are a classic Montessori activity that is incredibly simple to set up. Collect five to seven related items in a basket that are safe for your child to explore. These can be animal figurines, types of vehicles, kitchen utensils, clothes, or even fruits. What the hand does, the mind remembers. And so we focus on providing opportunities to explore concrete items. The language basket provides an opportunity to learn language with a three period lesson, which progresses from introduction to identification to cognition. As your child takes the items out of the basket, name them. This is a cat. This is a pig. When you believe your child cannot recognize the names of the items, move to the second period. This can be within the same presentation or a later time, depending on your child's interest and current development. Show me cat. Or for a child who can follow simple directions, put the mouse on your head. This can be a more formal activity or simply something that happens in passing while you're playing or getting chores done. The final period of the three period lesson is recall when we ask the child to name each of the objects. <laughs> we enter this period only when we believe the child can recognize and successfully name the objects. A variation of the language basket is a sound discovery basket, where we present our toddler with items that start with the same sound, like cat, cap, crayon, cookie, and so on. This is a simple way to begin phonological awareness and eventually progress into beginning sounds work. This does not need to remain a static activity. One of our favorite variations ever since Stella started walking has been a scavenger hunt or obstacle course combined with a language basket. I would hide animals all around and call them out for her to find. As she found them, I'd ask her to name the animal again or make the sound of the animal once she was speaking. And don't forget about learning about the body. Starting around 12 months, your child will become very aware of their own eyes, nose, ears, hands. This is a great time to give them that language, like during diaper changes or baths, playing peekaboo, or even singing head, shoulders, knees, and toes. As an extension to the language basket in the later toddler years, when memory has begun to improve, we can also play which one's missing by removing one of the items for a child to recall. Or guess the animal or instrument with something like these sound puzzles, where we can just hide the puzzle out of our child's eyesight and play one of the sounds like the pig or the piano, and invite the child to guess. You can also try a simple memory game with images once your child has mastered the more concrete version. Remember that children are fascinated by and interested in complex and long words. Don't shy away from using a proper term, labeling a rose and a hibiscus, not just flowers, a triceratops and a tyrannosaurus rex, rather than just a dino. We touched on practical life earlier, but truly, as you enter toddlerhood, this will be such a simple but effective way to provide language development opportunities for your child. In a Montessori home, we welcome our littlest members to lend us a helping hand, and as they enter toddlerhood, you may notice that your child is mainly focused on imitating everything you do. Our favorite activity starting around 12 months and to this very day has been putting away groceries. Motor skills and practicality aside, consider all the language opportunities in this one activity. Naming food items, categorizing fruits, vegetables, dry goods, pantry, inside, on top of, behind, the list of language opportunities is endless. And the same is true for any practical life activity. I have a separate video on all the practical life activities our little ones may be interested in in exploring in the early ages as well as later toddlerhood, so I'll go ahead and link those down for you below. Montessori sensory motor activities are also a phenomenal source of rich new vocabulary. While they allow our children to explore the world through their senses in isolation, an important learning opportunity in and of itself, they're also a source of more complex vocabulary. In fact, all Montessori activities are an opportunity for language development as we work on learning the names of the material, setting them up left to right, and specific linguistic points of interest. The nap cylinders teach tall, short, small, large, thick, thin, and their superlatives. Smelling and tasting jars allow the child to concretely root names of scents and flavors with a lived experience, so now we're also learning scents like mint, cinnamon, vanilla, as well as flavors like sweet, salty, sour, and so on. Therming bottles present the opportunity for warm, warmer, cold, and colder, while rough and smooth and big versus small sorting focuses on those respective concepts. While the actual presentation is done with few to no words to allow the child to focus on our actions, we do take the time to also name the material and highlight these language points as well. 
Another classic sensorial activity that is simple to set up is the stereo agnostic or mystery bag. Place a few items that feel distinctly different and your child knows the names to into a bag. Invite your child to reach inside and guess what that item is before taking it out to check. This is an opportunity to work on so many different adjectives. Try to find items that will have different characteristics to explore like a cold metal spoon, a large prickly pine cone, and a soft, small pom-pom. Before we get into sorting sensorial activities like big versus small, our children need to work on matching activities. I do have a separate video that outlines everything specific to Montessori matching activities, but the general progression is always concrete to abstract, meaning we start with matching familiar objects like fruits or animal figurines. Make sure the items are identical or as identical as possible, including their size, shape, and color. Color matching is a separate skill that may come after basic matching is in place. Our favorite was matching fruits. We also really enjoyed this texture matching activity. After your child has mastered identical object matching, we start the progression to abstract with object to picture matching. Eventually we progress to matching items to similar pictures and then matching identical pictures followed by similar pictures, matching the front and back or parts of animals. In this way, our child has now recognized that items can be the same and have similar characteristics. We have also laid the foundation for future three-part cards work, which is a great activity for future reading and writing work, but that's for another video. The next progression is sorting, where we focus on different characteristics within items. Again, to start, we isolate just one quality and use concrete objects like blocks of different sizes. Sorting opens the opportunity for much more complex language activities, including classification, such as sorting animals by their habitat, sorting rough versus smooth items, large, medium, and small, heavy or light, sink or float, magnetic or not magnetic. As you can imagine, this simple concept now opened the door for us to model a wider variety of even more complex language. This is also a time when we can now introduce classification or go-together activities. Present your child with a handful of various items or pictures that are from different categories. Now we're not only working on the language of these items, but also the names of the categories, as well as the concept of classification, which is incredibly important in not only language, think classifying nouns, adjectives, and verbs, but many other areas of study. A quick reminder that reading, singing, and speaking to your child remain incredibly important as they enter and progress through toddlerhood as well. As your child starts to speak, encourage them to use more and more language by presenting those opportunities. Opportunities. Rather than asking, did you want this cup or this one? Say, did you want the green cup or the yellow cup? And when they inevitably answer yellow, model a longer phrase back to them again. Yellow cup? Okay. You may find that your child is interested in imitating hand motions to certain nursery rhymes like itsy bitsy spider, meaning they're remembering and predicting the sequence of the rhyme. Once they've started speaking, you can try to pause at the end of a sentence of the nursery rhyme, allowing them the opportunity to jump in and finish the sentence. Mishka kasalapi polisu as they pick up on the idea, you can leave more and more words out for them to fill in. At this point in your child's development, you may notice that they're ready for sequencing, which is essentially sorting into what happened first and what happened next. When introducing this activity, ensure the experience is something that your child has lived. If they have never dropped and broken an egg, this type of sequencing activity will not make any sense to them. This may be an activity that you choose to DIY to make sure it's an experience that your child can relate to. If there is a book or nursery rhyme that your child has started to try and retell together with you, you can introduce that story as a sequencing activity as well. Start with making copies of the exact pictures in the book as it is much easier for your child to recall and have the proper control of error by referencing that book. They may be ready to sequence the story before they can fully retell it on their own, but as before, we can simply assist them by starting the sentence or prompting them with a question and letting them finish. If they're ready for a new challenge, you can do the same type of activity by just creating the characters from the story, which requires a lot more language recall on the child's part. We can also invite our child to work on creating full descriptive sentences with either pictures or items around the house. Just like before, ask the child, what is this? While pointing to an object, but then challenge them to describe the item. They will likely say each adjective separately. It's white. It's fluffy. It's cute. Model putting it all together into one sentence, such as the white cat is fluffy and cute. You can do this with any item at home or outside. Once your child has gotten the idea, you can try story dictation. Just as it sounds, your child will dictate a story to you while you write it down right next to them. If you think about it, in the modern day, our children see very little writing being modeled to them. Invite the child to either pick a couple of items to sit in front of you or have some pictures for them to glue to a piece of paper and invite them to dictate a story describing the items and let their imagination run wild. Your child may also 
also have discovered phonological awareness or have shown an interest in letter sounds. If not, there is certainly no rush. But for the child drawn to letters and sounds, we can start some simple activities focused on hearing and identifying the sounds in the spoken language. We can go back to our language baskets, but now fill them with items that start with different sounds and as the items are removed, emphasize the beginning sound. Cat, dog, flower, and continue through the three-period lesson. Real. It's in the book. Mmm. Спасибо. Z. 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 Once the child can identify the beginning sounds, we can provide a mixed basket of items to sort based on beginning sounds. I prefer to start with common but very distinct beginning sounds like k and a, uh, rather than sounds that can be hard to distinguish at first like t and d. A more challenging extension is to ask your child to find an item in the room that starts with a certain sound. So rather than making a choice from a curated selection, they're recalling the names of the items in the room and analyzing their beginning sounds. All of these activities can of course be done with ending sounds next. Finding rhymes is also a phenomenal practice in phonological awareness. Identifying rhymes requires the child to closely listen to and identify the sounds within words. They recognize that words have separate parts, parts that remain the same and parts that may change. This is an important foundation for future reading and writing. You simply create a tray where there are pairs of items that rhyme and invite your child to lay out each of the items and find which pair rhymes. Your child may become inspired by this activity and start trying to create their own rhymes by switching out the beginning sounds of words. They will likely end up landing on many nonsensical words that do rhyme but do not happen to correct them. This is a great progression of the activity and an indicator that they're grasping this concept. Making rhymes with actual words will come next. Remember that at the end of the day, the best way for your toddler to learn more language is through interaction with you and their surrounding world. A nature walk can present just as much of a language development opportunity if we are intentional about it. I hope this video has provided you with a starting point for your child's oral language development. Let me know if you like a similar progression for reading and writing. And until next time, I hope you stay safe.